Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. All right, so uh, we've got a couple more wines here from the Wine Spectator. No, Wall Street Journal Wine. Ugh. Wall Street Journal Wine Club or whatever you want to do. So WSJWine.com. So we're almost done with these wines. I think I have, I think I only have like a couple more wines from them uh, to, to review. So, um, so let's get right into it. So this is this first one. This is the 2007 Pagos de Tahola uh, Rioja. What does it say in here? Oh, sorry. Then we'll have to say any type of reserve or whatever. Um, so this is uh, Familia Chavari. Uh, blah blah blah. So um, the Chavari family has been has obs has observed since. I'm sorry. Wine, uh, Rioja winemakers believe in patience, so the family has observed that since 1882. Uh, so they've been making wine since 1882. Um, they talk about uh, that the Tempranillo, this is what the grape variety is in Rioja, 60-year-old um, vines, and they had an unusually long growing season for 2007. Um, just trying to think if there's anything else. That, uh, nope. So that's the uh, long and short of it. So this wine can be purchased for $24.99. Uh, so I should have done that one first, but we already started recording. So $24.99 a bottle. Now I had bought this all for like under a hundred bucks for like 15, for like 15 um, bottles of wine. So, um, Anyway, so uh, so this is one of the most expensive of the bottles that I, uh, as far as what I got for the value of, of the hundred dollars, and um, so let's see how it is. I really like Riojas. I really like Tempranillo. Um, big fan of it. A big fan of it from here in Texas. I think uh, some people may. I think there's some excellent examples of Tempranillo here in Texas. So let's check it out. Seems a little bit closed on the nose at first here. I mean, I get I get some kind of aroma, but it's like like really faint red fruit, nothing nothing really jumps out. Wow, that's silence. So, okay, so when I do all these editing and all the editing, the, the, the microphone that I use or the, uh, the recorder I use tries to block out as much noise as possible. So you really can't hear anything, which is great. When you, when you hear the microphone, the audio from the uh, camera, all the noises are going like the air conditioner is going or the, or the, the, air, the uh, refrigerator behind here is going or the wine fridge is going. Everything is off, no noise. In other words, the recorder has, isn't really do, working too hard on the noise gate to uh, reduce the background noise. I'm just stalling, trying to let the wine open up a little bit. All right, we'll go Israeli style. I mean, some red fruits and that's about it. And it's still pretty weak. Um, so let's see how it tastes. Mm. 
Okay, so yes, got it out of the wine fridge almost an hour ago. So if it's if it was 55 in the wine fridge, it's it's going to be in the 60s. So it should be at the proper serving temperature at this point. Okay, I mean the bottle is cool to the touch, but it's not it's it's not too much cooler than it would feel right now in the house. So it's not because it's too cold that I can't smell anything. I mean, it does feel like it's opening up. Oh, that just turned on. It's a bit rustic, a um, little bit of bramble to it. Um, it's not very flavorful. I mean, I don't, I'm not getting a lot out of it. I mean, maybe if I decanted it or left it out to warm up some more, but it can't, it's not going to get too much warmer than it is now. Um, you know, there's a little bit of heat I can feel. Even though I'm not really swallowing, you still get the heat, okay? Um, Hoping swallowing what might aid in the flavor profile. I get a, a hint of vanilla. Um, now the uh, turned on. The refrigerator in the back turned on. I normally don't ever pay attention to these noises in the house, but since everything was turned off and it was quiet, I noticed there was no noise. Um, a hint of vanilla. You can taste a little bit of wood, um, some red fruits. Um, you know, th this this could maybe do some you know do with some decanting. We're talking seven plus years old now, um, which is not unusual. Rioja is meant to be aged. You know, they're, they're, it's meant to be released. Um, now it's not, you're not meant to be drinking like it's 2015. You're not meant to be drinking 2013 Rioja. You could, you can, but if you're spending a little bit of a premium, you're probably going to have a few years of age on it. Um, it's like, it's like Brunello. They don't, they don't release it for what, three years after vintage. Um, so, or four years. So, you know, they, they, they try to age it at the winery first before it gets released. They try to release it when it's ready. Let's see. Um, there's 114 reviews on Wall Street Journal Wine, and overall it's a 3.9 out of 5. Um, you know, it's a $25 bottle of Rioja. I don't get a lot out of it. Um, you know, I've had other Riojas in the same price range, or more expensive or less expensive, that I feel like I'm actually tasting something out of it. And it's just, I just don't really get anything. I'll, let me see if this says anything in here. Um... Genuous, genu generous red berry fruit is in perfect harmony with vanilla oak and gentle spice. Um, yeah, I mean, I got that. I got the vanilla. I got a little bit of wood, so a little bit of oak. Um, some red, some red fruit. It's really muted right now, so it could just be that, you know what? Hey. Um, it needs to sit out. Maybe it needs to decant a little bit. Um, maybe I should have served it at room temperature, but it's pretty darn close to it. I'm just thinking like at $25 a bottle, there's, there's other wines out there that are going to have a more immediate effect on me. Okay. Uh, I am looking forward to drinking this later, not tonight, but later you know, I've, I've corvined it so that way I can drink it. You know, I can hold it for a little bit. Not hold it as an agent, but I don't have to drink it tonight. So we'll see how it goes. All right. So let's move on to uh, wine number two. All right. So wine number two. This one I've got quite a bit of uh, expectations from. So wine number two is the J. Opie Malbec 2013 on here on the website says 14. Okay. Um, 
$13.99 a bottle. Again, Wall Street Journal wine. Get a little bit here to rinse it. Uh, now, Opie Sadler is a very well-known and very well-respected winemaker in Argentina. So, um, I mean, he's got apparently all these accolades, uh, very respected, very well-known, um, has been, uh, has been the winemaker at, um, Bodega Santa Ana, uh, for quite a while. And, um, I just don't think there was anything here specifically that I wanted to, yeah, 25 years experience at uh, Bodega Santa Ana. Um, so this is his signature wine. So I'm not sure if it's actually made at the bodega, that bodega is, or he uses some other facility to actually make the wine and all that. But, um, I have high expectations of this wine just from reading how great of a winemaker he is, or at least the accolades he's, he's gotten. So, let's check it out. There we go. Forgot to start the timer. Lots of bramble. Like bitter chocolate. Like really bitter chocolate. There's a lot of bitterness, just really, you know, bitter bitterness and, and wood um, in, in the nose here. Get a little light over here. Yeah, I keep looking at the lower screen. I look really kind of dark. I didn't change up the um, the exposure when I set it for manual. Um, I know I can quote fix it in the mix, but it always seemed like I look too dark on the screen over there. And then when I do the editing, then it feel then I, I brighten it up. And then when I do the editing, it feels like I'm too bright. So I'm gonna trust the camera. I don't really get much. Not really any um, fruit on this, no floral. So it does have that kind of, I wouldn't say electric pink rim, but there's definitely a, um, you know, um, a look to the, a look to the edge of the, um, of the wine that would make me think it's not anything other than Malbec. That's another thing, just really coat the glass. That way, I'm, maybe not, maybe I was getting the bramble from there. No, I mean, it's, it's really got a, kind of, a little bit of smokiness to it. So instead of the bitter, um, a little bit of smokiness, almost like a little burnt. Like uh, you burnt the bacon. But yeah, not really any fruit, no floral, a little bit of woodsy. If I could have a tree trunk and bite into it, that's what I just got. Lots of bark and wood and just over the top on that. That's the very first thing that hit me. Structurally, it's it's actually kind of light bodied, medium bodied, maybe. Yeah, medium bodied. Um, on the back end, I'm starting to get the fruit. So the front end just kind of hits you really with like a ton of a ton of wood. Um, and then it really calms down quickly, and then you get a little bit of the fruit. Mm. 
I mean, yeah, the very first, the first flavor profile is lots of wood mixed with some fruit. Like you took a blender and took some bark that maybe got a little charred and uh, threw some like cranberries and raspberries and cherries and blended it all and you drank that. Um, not my cup of tea. I mean, it's, it's you know what? It, it's honestly, I said it's tea. It feels like I can taste that there's a bitterness, um, not an unpleasant bitterness necessarily, but it feels like I can taste um, tea leaves, okay, or coffee grind, okay. And that's probably why I'm not really falling head over heels in this for this wine because I don't like coffee. I don't like anything related to coffee. Now I think this is what it is. It's it's, it's a very. If you like coffee, you're gonna like this wine. Um, it's got that bitter roasted coffee flavor. Uh, and aroma, and that's probably why I'm not a fan of this because I don't like coffee. Yeah, that is exactly what this is. So every time I get that smell or taste, I've been calling it like this, like the, a bitter and, and wood and all that, but it's really a roasted coffee flavor. Like it could be like espresso, whatever. Okay. So now I need to file that into what that really is and not what I've, I've been dancing around it. Um, it's really what it is. Now, you know, I saw, I saw in a video somewhere, you know, how much, how much little flavor identifiers in coffee there are versus wine. It's amazing. It's like, I don't know, like 800 something little like things in, in, in coffee versus wines, 200 something. I don't know. Um, I, I wish I actually paid attention to, it, but I was like, which I was like watching it late night. I was like, what's that? And then went on something else. Yeah. And it tastes like wood too. Okay, it's not just the coffee, but once you, the initial taste, then you sit in your mouth a little bit, you get a little bit of red fruit and some coffee flavors with the roasted, really got the roastedness out of it. If you like that flavor profile, then you will like this wine. If you don't like the flavor profile, you're not gonna like it. So I personally wouldn't buy this wine again for myself. It's not, it's not something I really feel like drinking. I will finish the wine. I'm not gonna dump it out. Uh, now that I know what the flavor profile is or understand it, um, yeah. It's $14, so I mean, as a, as a wine for $14, it's not a bad wine, honestly. It's got some good flavor to it, it's got good balance. Uh, it's, it's medium bodied, maybe medium minus acids around medium, medium minus. It's not, it's not, it's not a bold wine. I mean, the very first initial flavor is bold, but then that quickly drops, you know, then, then you get a little more elegance out of it in the back end. Okay. I mean, I can still taste it. So it's not, it doesn't like just drop off. Okay. It doesn't like fall off the face of the earth. So it's not a bad wine. Um, I'd probably drink this is because even though I don't get a lot of, I didn't get a lot of the flavors out of it, I'd probably rather have that wine um, for the flavor profile it does have versus this wine. But I will finish this wine at some point in time. All right, so um, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Um, as always, click the links above to friend me up. Hit the link over there to send me a few ducats. Uh, there'll be links below. I forgot to say that last episode. Links below for uh these wines um i didn't ask about last i didn't ask i didn't uh, did not ask last episode if anyone would like the april fools fools one i don't know i it was i tried to do something different for april fools i've been wanting to do those those stupid wines for a while because i really have never had them i'll never have them again um i really have no desire to try any of the other other ones i didn't try um and um it was a Wednesday, close enough to the Monday. Well, if you liked it, you liked it. If not, you know, whatever. Um, anyway, so that's going to be it. Like I said, link, link, links. And uh, we will see everyone again next time.